Okay, next macromolecule are the proteins. This is a really super important, I would say, I mean, I don't guess you can pick one to be more important, but um, really a cell at the end of the day is a lipid bilayer on the outside and then inside all of the work that a cell does is done by proteins. Okay. When we discussed the characteristics of life, we said one of them is information and about how all living cells also contain DNA, ribosomes, and make proteins. That's because really a cell works because of these proteins. We see there are enzymes that are made of, well, they are proteins. These enzymes basically make, says it uh, functions, helps in digestion of food, really, but you could say that an enzyme, the function is basically all chemistry that happens inside of a cell, all metabolism that happens inside of a cell is because of enzymes. Transport, movement, structure, right? communication, cell to cell, hormones, right? the immune system is works at the behest of proteins, um, your muscles contracting, protein storage. Um, and so basically, this is just a small sampling of functions that, and types of different proteins. Right? Suffice to say, super important. There's a whole area of uh, biology called proteomics. It's all about proteins. Right? Okay, how do you recognize a protein? Um, here's the monomer of a protein. This is the building block of a protein. It's called an amino acid. Okay, and we have some parts of these amino acids are consistent. Each of them has an amino group, right? And N, two H's, shown as uh, you know, NH2. There is a carboxyl group on the other end, which is shown as the COOH, the carbon, single covalent bond to one oxygen, single covalent bond to another carbon, double covalent bond to the other oxygen. Random little hydrogen in here to make the carbon happy. And then this side group. This is your functional group. We talked, we ended chapter two briefly talking about functional groups. This side chain or R group is really what makes each of the amino acids different from each other. Okay, here are think that we have 20 or 23 amino acids in all of our proteins um, and here are some of the most common ones <clears throat> so things to notice here besides the blue little box all of these amino acids are just exactly the same okay the blue box is the functional group or the R group this this really becomes important later when we talk about um, different diseases and genetics because we're going to see ultimately these building blocks of a protein are what give that protein um, its ability to do whatever job it has. Okay. So um, just note these side groups for now. Um, amino acids in that, I think it probably is in this, yeah, see all the different names of the amino acids, glycine, methionine, glutamine, so on and so forth. Each one has its own three-letter name, uh, and muscle milk, things like that, really, when you buy those, it will have a different mixture of different amino acids in there and that's just about right, the reason that you buy and drink those things the idea being you want to build muscle in order to do so you need the building blocks and so you're uh, really paying for these amino acids okay. um, and some of these things are again like the essential fatty acids these things um, are essential 
systems in the OS. Five solutions, solutions and systems are the three deemed the essential ones in that your body cannot metabolize those. All right. As I mentioned, this little green box is, is a, one of the really key points in this whole class is that the sequence of these amino acids in a given protein is what determines how that protein works through its effect on the protein's shape. Okay, here's your covalent bond, right? Amino acid, amino acid, dehydration, you're removing the, the two H's and O, forming a covalent bond here between the amino acids. That fancy term for this covalent bond is a peptide bond. So carbohydrates, glycosidic, lipids, ester, proteins, peptide bond. Polypeptides, proteins. Um, you're going to see a lot of these terms. Again, I think this makes your job more difficult is that sometimes you might hear something referred to as a peptide or as a polypeptide or as a protein, and a lot of times those things are interchangeable. A peptide is just a small protein. Polypeptide um, is a bunch of amino acids linked together by these peptide covalent linkages. Um, and a protein is either one polypeptide, or we'll see that sometimes these individual polypeptides can join together into these huge structures, these huge proteins. Okay. Um, Alright, we're going to go through these four levels of structure in the proteins. Okay, this, this one in some ways is kind of difficult to understand, but, but again, super important. We're going to start with one, work our way down to four. Primary, secondary, tertiary. Here's the primary structure. Within a given protein, the primary structure, right, is simply the sequence. In this case, it is glycine and then whatever that one is, and valine, glutamate, and so on and so forth. These Three letter words are the individual amino acids, and the, the sequence that they fall within a protein is the primary structure of that polypeptide or of that protein. Okay. We'll see that if you switch one of these amino acids for another, a lot of times the specific function of that protein can be um, compromised or changed. Okay. So um, human insulin always has the same amino acid sequence. Um, secondary structure. Okay. And again, these things are kind of like hierarchical or nested. So the primary structure is determined by the our, well, the primary structure is determined by the amino acid sequence. The secondary structure is determined by the primary structure. So we have, um, it's a little bit mm, confusing in a way. We see these different um, chain down here on the bottom. This is really the same as this. Right? Here, each amino acid is just represented by a little bead with a three-letter name on it. Here, an amino acid is drawn out in uh, its full molecular form. So again, we see the um, this would have been the amino group. Here is the, um, or no, this would have been the carboxyl group. This would have been the hydrogen. There was the amino group. Here's the side chain, right? And then there's another amino acid, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight amino acids. So that would have been whatever amino acids these are, whatever the sequence would have been, is the primary structure. 
secondary structure here is determined by the interaction of each of these two primary structures, right? So because of the sequence of amino acids, and because of where the um, uh, the side groups form, the long chain of amino acids will fold up into these secondary structures. Okay, so uh, yeah, here we go. Here's valine, histine, threonine. Here are the individual amino acids. So the primary structure is this sequence, how they interact with each other and fold into this alpha helix. The alpha helix is the secondary structure, right? Other places, the chain of amino acids kind of crumples up into a, what we call beta pleated sheet, right? So when you see a given protein structure and you see these little, they call them motifs, um, these are the, your secondary structure. Okay. Tertiary, you kind of think about this. Again, secondary is determined by primary. We can guess, we can predict that the tertiary structure is going to be determined by the, or the secondary structure. And indeed, the tertiary is the final three-dimensional structure of that polypeptide. Okay. Um, and so here we have on the bottom, this is a big enzyme, a large protein. It is one that converts malcose to glucose. Right, so it breaks apart that disaccharide. And we see here, see these secondary structures inside of this protein, right? So the secondary structures interact with each other. Some of them are attracted to each other. Some of them are repelled by another one. Um, and they will kind of, the secondary structures will fold and then will form these individual bonds between different parts of the protein. Okay. So in some cases, there's hydrophobic interactions between individual parts of the chain. In the other cases, say over here, this amino acid has on its R group or functional group has a sulfur. And then just so happens over here, there is another amino acid with a R group that has sulfur then they form this disulfide linkage and it creates a loop, right? Right here, there might be an alpha helix or beta pleated sheet. But then they form, they fold up into these larger structures. So we see here these little black and red, um, well, actually, no, those, that's, yeah, that's different. Okay, that is actually the, sugars that are being acted upon by the enzyme. Okay. So the primary structure is what the sequence is along this chain. A protein is just a huge long like a necklace, a beaded necklace. Right? And the sequence of the beads on that necklace is the primary structure. And how in small parts of the chain interact with each other to form little helices or to form pleated sheets. That's the secondary structure. And then as the entire long chain, big sections of it interact with each other to fold up into a three-dimensional structure that is the tertiary structure. So proteins are almost always three-dimensional, and that three-dimensional shape is critical to what their job is. And then we have the quaternary structure, which is several of these folded polypeptides come together. So maybe this one that we saw here and another one come over here, and then they glom together into like a superstructure. Okay. I'm going to run out of time here, but uh, I'll have a part two video for protein.